Okay, can you talk me through the key points of your presentation? Sure. So um, we've seen a changed political climate uh, at the European level, which has severely affected children. There are a number of new laws uh, and legislative initiatives which have impacted their rights. For instance, um, children can often only apply for a temporary status instead of refugee status, which makes it more difficult for them to uh, apply for family unification. There's an increased use of detention. Children are often immediately returned after their 18th birthday. Um, and this, all of this together has created a a big insecurity for children and it is also causing a huge psychosocial and mental health crisis um, across countries. So in, we see this in Sweden, Greece, Italy, Spain, everywhere. So this is an issue we feel that urgently needs to be addressed. Um, in terms of decision making, there's a lot of unpredictability. It's very hard to see who is taking charge at the EU level, so whether it might be the European Commission or some member states, alliances are shifting very rapidly. So sometimes it's France and Germany, other times it's the Visegrad countries, which are Hungary, Poland, Czech Republic and Slovakia. Um, so it's hard to predict which direction things are taking. Uh, which from an advocacy perspective is a huge challenge. However, at the working level, we see there is space for conversation, especially if we focus on evidence we have from our programs, if we talk, for instance, about the issue of guardianship, where we have some experience. Um, decision makers are willing to listen to us. There's openness to include amendments in legislation, to discuss better ways of working when it comes to children, when it comes to age assessments, guardianship, what is child-friendly reception, all of these things. Um, Unfortunately, human rights are increasingly dismissed as arguments. We see this, that uh, human rights conventions or the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child is more difficult to use an, as an argument uh, to support advocacy asks. Moving forward, I think there are some important questions uh, for uh, NGOs concerning how far we are willing to go along in the new policies that are being implemented. So we see that there is a focus on externalizing, externalizing migration policies. So that means that we will be asked to implement programs uh, supporting policies we don't often stand behind. So for NGOs, it poses serious questions because we always want to put the rights of children first and we also want them to have a right to asylum in the EU. Mm -hmm. So this is mainly what my presentation was about. And how can NGOs work closely with decision makers and policy makers to influence policy whilst at the same time maintaining their values base and mission? I think it's important to work with coalitions and be joined and work together and also exchange how you're handling certain things and certain discussions uh, within the organization and be united in your positioning. Um, I think it's also important to increase your evidence base and to be able to say what works and what doesn't. So um, we can, we have an evidence base that says that increasing and strengthening child protection also can contribute to making sure children don't take, undertake dangerous um, migration uh, routes. So these kind of things help us kind of counter the narrative. Um, so I think that is very important to strengthen our evidence base and work together and just be aware that we are kind of standard bearers when it comes to values and human rights uh, and not get too much dragged into issues, uh, not be too afraid to say things despite of the difficult political climate. Um, because I see that there is a form of self-censorship and I think we need to fight against that.